Welcome back to Physics with Safdar. Now you are watching Cambridge IGCRC Physics Paper Solution Series. In this series, topic by topic, we solve past paper question in easy way. So let's start the exercise of the day. This is question number one, taken from February March 2019 series. The question is a car traveling on a horizontal road has 1.6 megajoules of kinetic energy it accelerates for 20 seconds until it has 2.5 megajoule of kinetic energy what is the average power output used to increase the kinetic energy of the car let's draw this situation and try to understand in the beginning the car is moving with kinetic energy 1.6 megajoules because of the power of the car engine, it accelerates for 20 seconds and its kinetic energy increased 2.5 megajoules. Now the question is, we need to calculate that average power. The power, you can write like this, power is equals to increase in energy divided by time taken. In this case, the increase in energy K2 minus K1 Substitute the number, the K2 is 2.5 megajoules minus K1, that is 1.6 megajoules. When you subtract the number, then we get 0 0.9 megajoules. But look at this, uh, in this question, we have time in seconds, so change in energy must be in joules. So in this step, we change energy megajoules to joule and 1 mega is equals to 10 raised to the power 6. So you can put this number here. Then we get uh, 0 0.9 into 10, 6 joules. Now, equation is ready. You can substitute all the number. The power is equals to increase in energy. That is 0 0.9 into 10 raised to the power 6 over time is 20. Divide the number, then we get uh, 45,000 watt. Look at the options. In watt, we have 45 and 205 watt. These do not match with the answer, but look at the others. We have 45 kilowatt and 205 kilowatt. When you divide 45,000 with 1,000, then we get answer in the kilowatt. That is 45 kilowatt. Now check with the option. Option C is 45 kilowatt and that is the correct answer. Now this question number 2. This is from October November 2018 series. The question is a man climbs a ladder which two quantities can be used to calculate the useful power of the man. Look at this diagram. This is the ladder. A man has weight W. He climbs on the ladder and we need to calculate the useful power of the man in this case. Look at this formula. The power is equals to work done over time. It means if we want to calculate the useful power, we need two things. Number one, we need work done and time taken. So look at the option. Option number A is the weight of the men and the time taken. Time is correct, but we don't want weight in this case. Check the next one. The weight of the men and the vertical distance. Weight of the men and uh, vertical distance do not require only. Third one, the work done. We need the work done and the time taken only. These are correct, but check the last one also. The work done is okay. Vertical distance, we don't want this. So if you look at the option, option C gives the useful power of the men by using work done over time. That's why this is the correct answer. Now 
this is question number three from October November 2017 series the question is a motor is used to lift a load of 40 Newton the power of the motor is 40 watt and the system is 20% efficient how long does it take the motor to lift the load through 0 0.50 meter you can see clearly there is a motor in this diagram and it is used to lift the load the load is given 40 Newton and the motor lifts the load up to 0 0.50 meter height in this case we have information about the power input of the motor is 40 watt the efficiency of the system is 20 percent and the height gained by the object is 0 0.50 meter then we need to calculate time to lift mean from here till this point we need this time period now first of all because the efficiency is given the power input is given so you need to write the formula of efficiency efficiency is equals to power output divided by power input times 100 in this case we have efficiency is 20 we don't know the power output right as it is input is uh, 40 times 100 now arrange output power as subjects so you will get 20 times 40 over 100 after the simplification we get the power output the power output we get 8 watt if you look at the system the motor is lifting the object that's why the energy transferred is here in terms of gravitational potential energy so you can write the power output is equals to increased in gravitational potential energy that is mgh and the time taken to lift the object from beginning to the given height now the power output is 8 mg it replaced the weight you know well that is mg and it is given 40 times 0.5 that is height or distance uh, gained by the object over t because you need this t so you can make t as a subject finally we get 40 into 0.5 over 8 it gives 2.5 second so that is the time used to lift the object up to 0 0.50 meter height look at the options option number b is 2.5 second and that is the correct answer Discussion number 4 from October November 2017 series. The question is A student runs up a flight of stairs, which information is not needed to calculate the rate at which the student is doing work against gravity. Look at this diagram. This is uh, the student we have. This is the vertical height and this is the length given now the question is uh, calculate the rate at which the student is doing work against gravity when we get this the power is equal to rate of work so you can write power is equal to work over time in this case the student is doing work against gravity it means we are talking about the vertical movement and you know well when the object move against the gravity it gains gravitational potential energy so that's why in this case the work done is equals to gravitational potential energy now you can write the work done as gravitational potential energy that is mgh over time it means to calculate the rate of doing work we need mass gravitational field strength 
vertical height and time taken. Now move on to the option number one. The height of the flight of the stairs. Yes, we need it. It cannot be our answer because we need to write no needed. Concentrate here. The length of the flight of stairs. Look at this. In this power, there is no information regarding the length. So that's why we don't want this length to calculate the rate of doing work. So it is not needed. So that's the right answer. But check the others as well. The time taken, yes, we need the time taken, so it cannot be our answer. The weight, yes, we need the weight. Cross this. Finally, B is the correct answer. This is question number 5. From May, June 2016 series. The question is, two workers are stacking canes to a shelf in a shop, the workers lift the same number of identical canes onto the same shelf from the same level. Worker P takes 3.0 minutes to lift the canes. Worker Q takes 4.0 minutes to lift the canes. Which statement about the workers is correct? First of all, look at the situation, what we have. This is the shelf we have. And uh, these are the canes. You can see this is worker P and worker Q. Both are doing the same task. They are stacking canes onto the sh shelf up to the same height. But what's the difference? The difference is that they took the different time. The worker P took three minutes, then Q four minutes. When they lift the canes up to the certain height, it means they are increasing the gravitational potential energy of the canes. It means work done by the both workers are same. The work done by the worker P, look at this, increased in the gravitational potential energies of the canes, MGH. The work done by the worker Q, the same work done because they are lifting the same gain up to the same height. That's why the gain in gravitational potential energy are same. So you can write both are doing the same work. Work done by worker P is equals to work done by worker Q. Now check the power. The power is equals to work over time. And in this case, the work is same. That's why the time decides the power is useful more or less. It's very clear power and time are inverse in relation. It means the less time produce the more power. Look at the option. The worker P develops less useful power than worker Q. That is not correct because his time is less. He's creating the more useful power. Check the other one. Worker P develops more useful power than worker Q. If you look at the formula of power, it is very clear less time develops more power. And worker P is using less time. That's why it develops more power. That is correct. Check the others one. Worker P does less work, work than worker Q. That is not possible because both are doing the same work. Option D, worker P does more useful work than worker Q. That is not correct because both are doing the same work. In this case, option B is the correct answer. This is question number six from October, November 2016 series. The question is, a lamp has a power input of 5.0 watt. It weighs 1.0 watt of power heating the surroundings. What is the efficiency of the lamp? Look at this diagram. In this diagram, you can see the power input is 5.0 watt. 
and the waste power is 1.0 as a heat and we don't know what is the useful power in this case and what we want we want efficiency of that lamp the formula of efficiency you know well output power over input power times 100 it mean first you need to calculate the output power in this case how to calculate that one the input power which is 5.0 watt and PW this is the waste power when you make the difference between them you can get the power output or useful power easily subtract the numbers 5.0 minus 1.0 we get 4.0 and that is output power by using the equation of efficiency you can write the power output that is 4 input 5.0 times 100 we get 80 percent so look at the option option c is the correct answer This is question number 7 from October-November 2015 series. The question is what needs to be known to calculate the work done by the force acting on an object. And you can see a table in that three columns we have. The first one the size of the force are given. Second one the distance the force moves the object third one the time for which the force acts we need to calculate work done that's why I first recall the definition of work the work is equals to force time distance moved in the direction of force suppose we have an object and uh, at position A On the application of force, the object displaced from point A to point B and it covers some distance. So it is very clear to calculate the work done, we need only two things. How much force is there and the distance covered by the object. Look at the options. We have size of force, we have distance, we have time. Because we don't need time so check the first with the time in this option a he said we need time that is not correct so option a cannot be our answer option b time is not needed that is correct it could be our answer check the others as well option c the time needed that is not correct it cannot our answer Option D, time not needed, that is also correct. A and C cannot our answer, but there is a tie between B and D. Check the B, the side of force is required, that is correct. The distance moved, the force by the object we needed, it's okay. And time not needed, it's also correct. B is the correct option. 